previously on board. Pirelli have um, re-signed with Formula One. Now, you've got to understand, during the whole of the 2013 season, we were waiting for an announcement to come out as to who the tyre supply would be for the forthcoming season and seasons in Formula One. The smart money was on Pirelli, purely for the fact that going into a new season, new regulations, they at least have some kind of history with dealing with these vehicles. Although this year the cars are dramatically different. There were tremendous rumors going along, uh, going around in terms of uh, who tire suppliers could be. And a lot of talk about the uh, tire supplier Hankook, who now supply, for example, series like DTM. But it has just been announced today that the FIA have agreed to a new three-year deal with Pirelli as the tire supplier. So um, what had happened prior to the FIA announcement, is that Pirelli had already uh, sort of signed a deal, this is, you know, very strangely, with Bernie Eccleston and, the, and all of the teams for a five-year deal, regardless of what the FIA had said. So we were, we, there was definitely some head-banging going on between, what's his name, Mr. Provera uh, from uh, Pirelli, and I think the likes of Jean Tot at the FIA. Nothing has really emanated from it that has said why there was this ongoing spat. Pirelli wanted a five-year deal. FIA have come out and said they will give you a three-year deal. So they renewed the tire supply contract. And it's three years starting from this season, 2014. So it'll be 2014, 2015, and 2016. Is it good or is it bad uh, for Formula One? Personally, I think it's very good under the following conditions. That Pirelli continue to make tires that are sort of on the edge for racing. Because I think they have added a tremendous amount of spice to the racing that we've had over the past couple of years. There have been, however, some problems. We had problems, I think it was in uh, the UK earlier this year, it was at Silverstone where we had tyres uh, breaking and, and uh, um, uh, puncturing very, very easily. This now becomes a safety concern as opposed to anything else. But it's not as simple as it, as it seems. And one has to feel a lot for just the normal person who watches Formula One. If you're watching and your favorite driver all of a sudden gets a puncture or his tire blows out, you're going to be very upset with the tire supplier. Mm. You're not expected to know everything that else is going on behind the scenes. That makes that tire work at specific conditions. What transpired is that a lot of teams were changing the camber on the tire using different kinds of pressures compared to those that were suggested by the tire supply, Pirelli. So you sit there and say, well, Pirelli have made a tire that's too, uh, it, well, has made a tire that, that has too many limitations within it. And then you've got the teams who are sitting and saying, well, those are the limitations, but now we're even going to try and push them further. So who is actually at fault? So then eventually what happens is, is that in 2013, uh, Red Bull sat there and said, we're not interested in these 2013 tires. We want to go back to the 2012 compound um, design structure of the tire. We don't even mind if you use the same, if you use the 2013 compound, we just want the structure of the tire to be 2012. And since then we saw um, Sebastian Vettel win how many? 13 races uh, in, in 2013. So Pirelli are in, in a very difficult position, but I think it's been very good for the sport and it's been very good for Pirelli. They were given the mandate when they started in Formula One to give the opportunity to make the racing more exciting. And they took on that challenge. And I've always been an advocate of this. They took on the challenge to sit there and make it more exciting. So they went out and embarked on making tires that were a little bit more, uh, I, I can't find the word. I've been trying to find it for five, win uh, five minutes. 
How, but the word they be, they were went out and made a tire that was going to be more destructive. That was going to wear quicker. That was going to be really on the edge of what Formula One can provide. Now doing that, they sat. In, they must have sat in the boardroom and went, you know what, guys, we're going to have tires that are going to be exploding. They're going to have. We're going to come across a huge amount of negative PR because people are going to come out and say our tires are rubbish. But they sat and looked at it and went, you know what, if we can add uh, some element of excitement to the racing. People will eventually understand what we are doing and why we are making the tires the way that we are making them. And that has been the biggest challenge for Pirelli. They have made tires that wear quicker. And uh, what, what we've come to, uh, a term we've come to use over the past couple of years is get to the edge of the cliff. Where they no longer can actually give the driver any more uh, performance. Therefore, they have to be changed. So we've seen increased pit stops. We unfortunately have seen some blown tires. And over the, the three years that we've had Pirelli, we've also understood that, you know, the, tire, the teams will also try and manipulate the tire in order for it to function better with their car against the actual specification and the guidelines provided by the tire supplier. So they still have a great challenge. This coming season... Nobody knows how these tires are going to work, um, purely because we have no idea what these cars are going to do when they get onto the racetrack. We've got turbo-driven engines. There's a different kind of torque power that is going to be used. And because of that, it's going to have a different kind of wear on the whole tire, specifically the rear tires, in my opinion. I think they're going to be used, uh, they're, they're going to wear a lot quicker. So we can only wait until we have our first test session, which is the 28th of January uh, in Jerez, and hopefully they'll be with the 2014 tire compound. But I think it's good news that Pirelli are still there, and I think they're going to do another exceptional job. I think they have done an exceptional job uh, since they've been returned back into uh, Formula One. Just to let you know, in terms of the rules uh, for 2014 and, and uh, going forwards, uh, the, there will be 12 days of official pre-season testing, as prescribed in the 2014 sporting regulations, and they will be dedicated exclusive to wet tire testing. And that is only one of those 12 days will be uh, dedicated exclusively to wet tire testing. So they will be at a circuit or whatever, and they will just have to make it wet. Each team will uh, dedicate one of their eight days of in-season testing, as prescribed in the 2014 Sport and Regulations, exclusively to tire testing. This means that during each of the eight days of in-season testing, at least one team, and up to a maximum of two, will be concentrating on tire testing along with Pirelli's engineers. Okay, and Pirelli will continue to determine the specifications of the tyres and to manage all aspects of their developments in close consult consultation, of course, with the FIA and the teams. So, that's, that's my take on it. I think it's great that they're still back in Formula One, uh, and I'm great that they have an, an extended contract now, whereas uh, up until this stage, uh, we only knew that they were going to be here for at least only 2014. At least we're in for three years. I think it gives some stability to the teams. It gives some stability to the, uh, to the tire supplier Pirelli, and of course it gives uh, stability to uh, everybody else who's involved in Formula One so that everyone can develop around the tire as well. But we don't want cars developed around tires. And this is where we do have, we're going to come into conflict this season, I can tell you. With the fuel consumption, that is going to be a major problem in, uh, in 2014. Reliability, I think, with turbo-driven engines is going to become a, a problem in 2014. And then we might have these tires that are also might, might have their limitations in 2014, where all of a sudden we could get cars driving around the track slowly in order to preserve everything. That, I think, is one of my biggest worries for 2014. Hopefully, it won't go that way. We shall wait and see. Some interesting comments about my um, um, comments about Pirelli. And a lot of people coming up, and uh, something that I think should be debated. And that is that, you know, Dicey, and you brought this up uh, so eloquently, is that maybe we should have more than one tire supplier. 
Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I think is a very, uh, uh, which does have a tremendous amount of merit to it. But there are fundamental problems when it comes to the world of Formula One. The cars are so high tech that if they know that the tire supply is going to be Pirelli, they get the Pirelli tires from the tire supply when they do their testing. They then go and work their car around how these tires work. That's how anybody does it. Mm. When you get a set of tires, I mean, you can talk to anybody in any form of racing. And they get a set of brand new set of tires. They put it on their car. They go and do a couple of test laps. They come inside and they go, oh, it's feeling a little bit this way and feeling a little bit this way. They adjust that. They go out there. They try and get the tires hotter. And they come out and they work. They set the car around the behavior of the tire. It's quite simple. They do this in every form of motorsport. So the problem is, is that if you have two tire supplies, Daisy, carry on. No, I asked the question. Oh, you, oh, have you, to asked the, you asked the question. Yeah. So if you have two tire supplies, and we've we've seen this in the past, we, and and the past, if to to look to the future, sometimes you have to look to the past. If you look in the past, and specifically in the very very um, competitive late 1990s into uh, the 2000s, where we had Bridgestone as a tire supplier. and then we had Michelin as a tire supplier, and eventually we had Bridgestone as a sole tire supplier as well. Certain teams used the Bridgestone tires, and because of that, they did, and, and there was much more testing in those days. So they would sit and go out and do a test with the tires, so they would, they would get the tire supply to make the tire that suits the car. That's what they would do. So there were certain teams that drove on Michelin tires and certain te teams that drove on Bridgestone tires, and at stages, it was pretty competitive. But then all of a sudden, something happens, and it, it more than likely is going to happen if there were dual uh, tire supplies as well, is that one tire manufacturer finds the holy grail, gets the compound right that works perfectly with the cars that they are supplying, and all of a sudden you've got, for example, you've got a Mercedes AMG car running on Hankook tires, and you've got a Force India running on Pirelli tires. But all of a sudden, Pirelli's tires are so much better. So all of a sudden, you've got the Sahara car beating the Mercedes car, even though the Mercedes car is a better car. And I'm talking hypothetically, because this is what can happen. The, this is where all of a sudden you go, is it really a level playing field? We saw this back in 2005, where Michelin uh, all of a sudden got everything uh, going right and Bridgestone had uh, major, major issues with their tire and all of a sudden it, it wasn't really a fair test. So if I, and because, uh, okay, before I finish off, bef because there is so much technology, so much preparation in a Formula One car, you can't just all of a sudden wake up tomorrow and Daisy wakes up and says, oh, look, look, I've got new tires. Please put them on your car and go and drive them. It's not going to work. There has to be a tremendous amount of testing. There's certain, uh, you know, the tires, uh, the, the car is designed around the width of the tire, the, the, the depth of uh, the slick tread, the, uh, the compound weights, everything. I mean, it's so technical. That we don't really understand. In an ideal world, this would be the best thing. You have two tire suppliers. You all arrive uh, at the Grand Prix circuit on the Thursday. You all go and walk inside and you pull out uh, a ticket and it tells you what tires you're going to be using that weekend. That would be the ideal and perfect solution. But it would never happen because you don't have enough testing and each tire is going to work differently. It still would make for some great, uh, great racing and, and great fun. But I don't think the drivers are going to like it too much. The engineers aren't going to like it too much. The spectators may love it. But for the rest of it, it's going to make it very, very difficult. So, perfect world, yes. Go out there, luck of the draw. Today you driving on Pirellis. Tomorrow uh, you driving on Michelins. You driving on Hankooks. You driving on Goodyear's. I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe that would be the fairest way of doing it. But more than likely, if you've got two tire supplies, one is going to get it better than somewhere somebody else somewhere along the line 
and then it is going to uh, end up in tears and people are going to get very, very cross about it as well. So uh, one way of looking at it, just um, maybe your opinion is a little bit different. I'd love to hear from you as well. Gears. Gears on balls.co.za. Weekdays, 1.30.